have managed to read every single phrase of all those bits of paper. So, oh, thank you. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> um, what we're going to do in a minute, I'm going to say what I think they say very quickly in, in six in, uh, in 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 six bits and pieces. I was going to do something else before that, but I've completely forgotten what it is. Therefore, it can't have been important in any way. At least that's. I, I used to work in Derby. I was for six six years. I was I was on staff of the cathedral, and I worked for the local radio station. And um, this is typical weather. I love it. Living in Essex, it never rains. You know, I live in the driest county in England and in the warmest city in England. And, and you know, it's just unbearable for a Mancunian to do that. <laughs> I, I need 200 days rain a year. <laughs> um, so very simply, I want to suggest... The, the, the trouble is, when you, when you end up summarising all that work you've done, and, I, and thank you for keeping more or less to time, I think that went... You know, it, it's kind of speed dating for tertiaries, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and that went really well. And thank you to the facilitators, and it was great to hear the buzz around. It. Purposeful conversation, I think it's a really good phrase. It's not my phrase. Um, it's really interesting working with Stephen Cottrell in that we, I sometimes hear him using my phrases, and I sometimes end up using his phrases. And it's one day to become indistinguishable, and we'll have to claim copyright on them, won't we? No, the don't do that. Um, and so this may sound really simplistic. How do I boil down pages and pages of notes and from discrete and different groups? I and mean, the first thing I want to say is, in, inevitably, the second iteration of those groups confirmed what the first iteration said. It'd be very peculiar if that wasn't the case. However, it was very interesting to note that there were distinctive themes that did emerge in a new way in the second iteration, which showed what a worthwhile thing that was to do. Um, some deeper engagement with the themes that you'd, you'd uh, engaged with before, the same themes, and yet... And yet uh, uh, some some helpful um, divergence, um, but it was really interesting. By the end of um, by the end of reading carefully through the first conversations, it was very clear to me that there were five five related themes. So you probably need to write these down because I can't attach this to a printer in these signs. And I, I'm going to do them in an order. I hope this doesn't impose. But of course it imposes an interpretation. Sorry. Of course it imposes an interpretation. That's what I'm doing here. Um, uh, but it seems... Uh, this is how I'm reading this. Um, so, and this is, this is five. And Wendy keeps on saying there's got to be six. And there will be six by the morning. But I will mention a sixth, which probably doesn't fit as a separate thing, but is part of the whole thing. But doesn't it all? I'm going to start with, with what, uh, what emerged again and again was a concern around how do we make an impact as Franciscans, which was related, and this is part of the same theme, was related very directly to the theme of distinctiveness. If there's one word or idea or notion in many different forms that emerged again and again, which is how are we distinctive? In a conversation uh, while I was doing this, somebody said to me, you know, why are we Franciscans not Benedictines? Interesting question to ask. What's distinctive about it? How do we make an impact? And making an impact is, is very clearly through our distinctiveness and the focus of our impact is church and world. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. So that seemed to be the, the substratum of the whole thing in so many ways. Uh, not our concern that we weren't making an impact. Uh, in, fact, in fact, I was really moved by... And maybe this is a very Franciscan thing, or maybe you just took seriously the invitation to be joyful about this. Uh, there's, a lovely, there's a lovely story about uh, Rabia, the, the great Muslim woman mystic of the Middle Ages, um, where a whole group of devotees come to ask her wisdom and how, they should they, how should they pray better. And she just looks at them and says, just stop complaining. <laughs> it's a great, great piece of spiritual wisdom. But what was lovely reading through what you wrote is there really were there were no whinges. There weren't people saying, "Oh, it's terrible. This is terrible." There were constructive contributions to how things might develop. But so, thank you for that. And I think it's been a really good hallmark so far of our time together. So, making an impact through our distinctiveness on the church and the world seems to be an absolutely fundamental theme here. Uh, underscoring that, and I, and I don't want this to sound too conventional, is how do we go deeper in our spirituality? Now, now I, I remember the days when St Paul's media centres were everywhere, and I loved the fact in a St Paul's media centre there was no spirituality section. It was called Christian life. Uh, so that's what I mean by spirituality here. Oh dear. Which again is about our distinctive spirituality, our discipleship, how formation is fundamental to that, and how developing our distinctive spirituality, of course, forms us so we can make an impact. So I'm going to relate those two. Um, as part of that, but I think is a very distinctive theme because this was mentioned again and again and again, and there's even an option around it, was JPEG. 
uh, how unsurprising <laughs> that in a gathering like this of people with a Franciscan sensibility, JP wouldn't be uh, close to the heart of this. But, but it's an encouragement, isn't it? A real passionate identification with those core things, not just of justice and peace and the integrity of creation, but a whole series of things that went with that, even dull words like ecumenism. Mate. Sorry. <laughs> Well, I don't know. No, ecumenism is a wonderful word, actually. It means a passion for the whole inhabited world. And how awful it is that we've reduced it to mean nice conversations between Methodists and Anglicans. Yeah? <laughs> Nothing wrong with us having conversations. But, you know, that passionate concern for the whole inhabited world, that's what that Greek word means. Um, and therefore, passionate concern uh, for our for interfaith dialogue and community cohesion, a particular passionate concern as we come up to the anniversary of, of Francis and the Sultan, in 2019, to say, what is that? What, what's Muslim-Christian relationships got? You know, what, sorry, Franciscan relationships with Muslims. You know, there's a very special vocation we have had in the past, and maybe in our culture we need to learn again. And that was a sub-theme, but, but JPIC as a massive theme in, in audio conversations. Um, and then the two things that, if you like, are slightly different from that, but, but are about, this, about serving that, is how do we grow the third order? <laughs> Uh, and, and that growth obviously is about, you know, of course, say gro and growth in depth, but actually growth in impact, growth in engagement, and growth in number, especially among young people. Now, Paul and I've had, Paul Alexander and I've had a conversation about how that is happening in certain ways with younger people. You know, I joined the third order at 19, and I shared with somebody over coffee just then that my, my eldest daughter, who's 23, uh, committed Anglican, f full of extraordinary, val passionate values about the world, it wouldn't occur to her to join us? And that's an interesting question. Why wouldn't it? Uh, so, so, so and that's not a negative, but it's not about making ourselves more attractive, but it is recognising these extraordinary values, which would speak, if my 23-year-old daughter was here now, and she's a vegan as well, which doesn't help, um, she would identify with everything we're saying. So we know that what, we, what we're saying, what we recognise as important, really important and valuable, does speak across generations. So how do we make that, how do we make an impact, again, in that context? And the fifth thing there um, was structure. And, I thought was, and, and for members of chapter who are here, I think it's a real encouragement. The overall sense is we've got a structure. Let's not mess around. Loads of change isn't helpful. Um, yes, we want structure to be limber and appropriate. But the big shift we want is about the way the order thinks of, of its mission and therefore what structure we need to enable that mission. And that structure is probably what we've already got, but it just needs to be informed by our passionate engagement. Yeah? Um, a real understanding of how you know, small groups are important, but how the simplicity of our structure needs to reflect the simplicity of our values. So those five things. How do you make an impact? That's to do with this. Oh dear, my screen's gone. <laughs> Making an impact, and that's to do with our, the distinctiveness of our offering. Going deeper in our spirituality. Horrible word. You know what I'm saying there. Our Christian life. The way Franciscan values trans transform Francis Franciscan life. Um, are very distinctive concern with justice, peace, and integrity of creation. And alongside those things, a, a real concern that we share these values, growing the order, is like sharing these values and, and seeing how they embed in other people, uh, not just by them becoming Franciscans, but, uh, but, but a much wider brief than that, and a structure that serves that, but we recognize we've probably got that. Um, again, over coffee, somebody said to me, the one thing not to miss, because it's probably not written down, although I think it was there and being written down, is, is um, the energy to drive all this. The energy to drive all this. And, and, and what that person was saying to me is, that was the energy I heard in my group. Now, maybe no, everybody didn't feel that, particularly in their small groups, but the, but the, we're here, or, or, or convocation, a, a call, we've been called together, literally, convocare, called together uh, to engage in these issues with a passionate concern, not for the third order, but for how the gospel through the eyes of Francis becomes active and alive in our world. And the energy, therefore, to drive all this isn't a concern, it's something we want to celebrate. Yeah? Celebrate and nurture. So, my five themes making an impact, going deeper, <coughs> JPIC growing the third order and structure and under, underlying all those the energy not to change things exactly but to develop and to drive uh, to drive these things does that sound like stuff you talked about yes. now what I want you to do now is you go into your third groups yeah, that's right, isn't it, Wendy? Yep. Oh, good. <laughs> no, losing it, losing it. And we'll say a prayer before we do that, just to, for my own sanity. Um, 
because uh, what I want you to do is, is, to, is to mess around with those themes. But if you think, and you may well think, we've well, completely missed the most important thing we said in our group. Or, while I was having a conversation over tea, somebody pointed out to me that. You get the point. So this isn't a closed agenda. Whilst, whilst we're trying to frame what we really want to work on tomorrow morning and go deeper with and begin to produce a, oh, I, said, I was going to say an agenda for chapter, I don't mean agenda, and it's not things to do, it's things to develop and things to drive for chapter, um, and you know, I've outlined what that begins to look like, there may be a yawning gap, there may be something we've all missed which suddenly occurs to you in a new configuration. So have you got the task? Yep. And are you still awake? Yes. Yes. Let's pick up our cards and just use this, this uh, convocation prayer. You see, if I had an overhead projector, I'd put it on the screen and we wouldn't need the cards and you wouldn't have to pretend that you hadn't lost them. <laughs> Let's say together. Lord of the universe, God and Son of God, you give yourself to us totally, receive us totally, so that in seeking to make you known, provoke love and harmony and live simply, we may together reveal your glory in the world. Amen. To your groups.